all right there? Oh, I apologise if you got the somewhat echo version of that. It would appear I've had the uh, audio on all the time. Um, sorry, it's early. Sorry, it's early. I just it's just this novel lark. If I uh, if I leave it too late, and I didn't realise what the time was. I meant to start this at half past three your time. No, half past three o'clock. Earlier than this was when it was meant to start. Uh, I've gone for the old classic black background. I thought it might make a change for the new year. You know, oh, Zen Maverick, he's he's got his head around that farmer con. He thinks I'm going to be getting. <laughs> Good Lord. I wish I could remember it. I wish I want to talk to you about the farmer con. But the truth is I can't remember it. Lacious. Lacious. Yeah, that's not a good start. All right, Lee. All right, Nora. Um, right, Nora's leaving as soon as your service is done. But you've only just started. Well, that's a bit... Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, nice one, years. There you go. Send good love and wishes and white well-being to the scrubs. Lovely. Right, let's get Twitch sorted out. I'm, I'm right on that. I'm right on that. Is the, uh, is the chat going to... Screw up. Oh, good Lord. Mr. Calls has called me twice in one day. There you go. Well, that's a sign. Uh, maybe it's because I started really late earlier and I've started really early now. So I've, uh, I've, 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 there's you and there's me usually. And we've gone like that. Wow. Maybe that's it. Maybe. Right, let me get this Twitch sorted out and then I'll get the grift on. And then I'm going to do my absolute mess of a pharmacon. But to be honest with you, the origins of the word are kind of irrelevant for the reasons I want to talk about it. But I should know. I did know once. But a lot of this stuff, if you don't regularly have conversations about it, it just goes because I'm old and my brain is fucked. So uh, I, know that so I know that Socrates was lured out to a place where the virgin, uh, where the virgin pharmacia sent her friend off into the infinity. Ha <laughs> ha, you getting all this? Are you following? Is it worth it? Because <laughs> Socrates was a bit funny about writing. That's that, that, that. The bits you need to know, I'll stress. The the the, the confusing bits that are only confusing because I don't know them, they're not important to why I'm talking to you about it. Right, that's Twitch sorted. Lovely. Ragnar's in there. No, no, me there too, Rags. Me there too. Hello, mate. I will prove it. There you go. Oh, yeah. You're doing a good job, son. You're doing a good job. Sterling work. <laughs> Yeah. Hello, Mosaic Labrador, the, 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 the coolest moderator in the West. Right, what now? Um, um, Grift. Right, let's get this sorted out. Oh, look at that. 76 already, even though it's early doors. I know what's going to happen, though. Loads of people are going to be fuming. They're going to come in here in 40 minutes and go, I didn't get a bloody notification. I thought it was on at four, like you said it was every day. And I'll... And then it'll be awful. Everybody know. And then I don't know how I'm going to apologize And I'm going to have to hit them with a bit of a pharmacesia of me own easier. Yeah, we're going we're to learn Greek today. No problem. Uh, no problem. Keezias there is ours. <laughs> oh, no, it's sounding a bit like Ogden's nut gone flake now, isn't it? That didn't take long. Um, okay. Hark. What Fimaconity. What Lycretius and... Socratic chat is this. Is, is, is. Right, we've got it. I don't even think it was Lucretius. Lucius. <laughs> this is going well. If you want to learn, don't come here. <laughs> but like I said, like I said, the important bits I'll make clear. Right. You can support this wonderful channel. This infinite darkness, this pharmacon. Oh, we'll see what I've done. We're already there. You can support this pharmacon. 
<laughs> yeah. Using the super chat function, which is the dollar sign just down there. Um, or you can use Entropy. Link in the description. Uh, Entropy is better for me, and you don't have to give YouTube any money if you do it that way. I'm happy with either. Um, I'm happy to do two streams a day because I get a few quid. It all works out well. It's very kind when people throw a few quid at the stream. And that's the griff done. Right. So, Socrates, I think it's Lucius. It's definitely not Lucretius. <laughs> Socrates is taken outside the city walls. In the Greek city-state, in the centre of the Greek city-state, you had the polis, P-O-L-I-S, which is where the word politics comes from. Follow, follow. And uh, he was led outside the city walls, out to a little bit of a beautiful tree in a lake. And when he got out there, Lucius said to him, he said, I want to tell you a story. It was Lu Max Lucius Bygraves, it was. He went, so Socrates, I want to tell you a story. And uh, Socrates said, you've lured me out here. You've lured me out here. And Lucius said, well, funnily enough, he said, there was a couple of virgins who played here years ago. There's some old story. And one of the virgins was called Pharmakia. And her friend got lured out there as well. And her friend was disappeared into the wind. And it was blamed on Pharmakia, right? Plato ends up in this story somewhere. I think they, I think, I think Lucius, Lucius got on the pipe and, done the off. Socrates went down the booze with Plato. Couple of jars. And that's when Plato, I think, started telling him about this, this mythology to do with the Egyptian gods. And there was something about this and that and this and that. And one of these gods was giving the other gods gifts. And then one gift, he said, he went, here, the other gift I'm going to give you is writing. It's this thing called writing. And I want to take you back. I want to take you back to a time before writing, a time before written characters. Because that time existed. It's strange, isn't it? And it's actually, we can actually consider, um, we can actually consider writing as a technology. And this other Egyptian god said to him, I don't like the idea of this writing. I don't like the idea of this technology. Because what's going to happen is people are going to people are going to write stuff down. And rather than the technology of writing adding to people's ability to remember, you know, because when he was trying to sell him writing, he said, look, if people can't remember everything, they can just write it down. You know, they can write stuff down so they won't have to remember it all. But then the other god said, yeah, but that's not actually a solution to memory. It's not actually a solution to wisdom. That is a problem because people aren't going to know it. People aren't going to know these things. They're just going to write them down. They're going to be in books. And so they're going to have all these books, but they're not going to know it. He said, this technology isn't a solution. This technology you call writing is a problem. Now, Socrates didn't write anything down. He didn't do it. He didn't like doing it. This is true. Socrates was known as who did not write. He was called, he was called, he, no, he called writing the technology of writing, which it is. It's a technology. It's a, it's a, a moment of progress. It's a tool. He called it the dangerous supplement. A dangerous supplement to speech. Now, in the story of the uh, the Egyptian kings, he described right, and he called it the pharmacon. That's what he named this piece of writing, the pharmacon. In philosophy, because after that story, you, you got to know uh, Socrates. Socrates had a had a had a had a star pupil. Socrates' star pupil 
was Plato. And the thing that his star pupil done when Socrates weren't looking was write it all down. Look, Moore's lab knows it. He didn't need to write it all down because he had Plato doing it all. And then since then, for various reasons, for, for ph pharmacosia, pharmacasia, whatever her name was, the, the technology of writing between the two Egyptian kings, pharmacon, in philosophy, the pharmacon has acquired quite the meaning. It is a it has acquired quite the meaning, the pharmacon. It also turns up in the book of Revelation. And it's trying in the Greek, in the Greek, in, in the Greek, it says pharmakia. But in the translation, they call it sorcery. So we've now got sorcery into this idea of, pharma, of pharmakia, of the pharmacon. But the pharmacon in philosophical circles means three things simultaneously. And this is incredible. And I mean that in the, in the, in the root meaning of that word. It's incredible. A pharmacon is something that is a remedy, like the technology of writing, is a remedy to memory. But it's also a poison, like the technology of writing is to memory. Isn't that amazing? Now that's all come together more by luck than judgment. But there's a third thing with the pharmacon. And that is the scapegoat. The scapegoat. Now, we know what the modern meaning of a scapegoat is. It's when you blame something or someone, even if you're not necessarily sure, but usually to shift the blame off of someone or something else, usually for reasons of expediency. That's what we call a scapegoat. No, you're, you've used that as you've you've used him as a scapegoat, so you can you know pass the buck, so to speak. So the pharmacon, right? Poison, remedy, scapegoat. Now, if we go back to the Bible, in the Bible, the scapegoat is something quite different. Again, in in um. In the Bible, the scapegoat is two kids, two kids, kids literally, not kids English slang for children, two um, baby goats. One was sacrificed, you know, just, uh, later. And the other one was let to run off into the, into the gong. And with it, it was thought it symbolically took away all the sins and wrongdoings of the tribe, of the A tribe, steady, steady. So one was killed and one was let to take the sins off into the, the wilderness. Now, the reason I'm telling you all of this is because we talk on this channel a lot, a lot about addiction. We talk a lot about drugs and and alcohol i don't i don't i don't like separating drugs and alcohol but because society has um i'm gonna have to keep saying it now you'll hear a lot of alcoholics refer to alcohol as their solution they'll refer to it as their solution Doug Stanhope makes a, a funny joke where a woman says, you've got a drink problem. And he says, no, he says, when I go out at night, I drink because I'm an alcoholic. And I have a good time because I'm drunk. But when you go out, you've got to have a good time. I haven't. I'm already having a good time. I haven't got a drinking problem. I've got a drinking solution. And it's quite a funny joke. However, people, especially addicts, Henrik, you never emailed me. 
You said you were the real Henrik and you never emailed me. Email me now, chris at chrisdangerfield.com. If I don't get that email in five minutes, you're blocked, son. Let me just get my phone available so I can see it. Chris at, I'll tell you what, I'll put it in chat so you can see it. I'll tell you why, because... It may well be you, and you might have just forgotten. But I don't. Otherwise, I don't want people impersonating. Others. But so if it is you, sweet. But you didn't email me last time. I asked you to, and unfortunately, we get so many um, imposters around these parts. I need you to um, prove who you are. You don't have to, of course. But if you don't, I'm going to have to assume it's not you. Exactly. But. I'm just letting him realise that I now will know that and it will get blocked. So listen, yes, great call, Noxin Curie. Homer Simpson said it, didn't he? Alcohol, the cause and solution to all of life's problems. There you go. Now, look look at drugs as well. No, 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 no. Watch this. Look, this is, this is how convinced that you're Henrik Block. Bye, mate. Um, he's gone. So let's look at drugs. Let's look at opiates. Opiates. Opium. The poppy grows. You slit, you slit the poppy. A goo comes out. People have been using that goo, which is opium. That's it. You don't need to do anything to it. You slit the poppy. The goo comes out. You eat that. And you will um, you will have full body anesthesia. You will have an opiate stupor. And from from opium, from the opium poppy, they make codeine, morphine, heroin, and even your opioids, your artificial ones like tramadol. They're based on the same chemical structure. So you've got this you've got this product, opium, or w what we can call opiates right which are used in medicine they're a remedy they're painkillers if you're in agony you can take morphine in england they're still allowed to give you heroin in hospital if doctors to sign it off they'll give you dihydro uh, not dihydrocodone diacetyl morphine which is AKA heroin. Heroin is actually a brand name invented by the Bayer Pharmaceutical Company in about 1936, I think, because they, 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 morphine, morphine, which is named after Morpheus, uh, the god of dreams. Morphine is a, is, is refined opium. But morphine was too addictive. They found it in Victorian England, there was loads of morphine addicts. A lot of women used to, jack it up under the table, literally into their thighs, like under the table. Oh, keep talking, darling. This is best conversation I've ever had. And uh, Bayer Pharmaceuticals decided to make morphine that wasn't so addictive. And those, um, those, uh, those geniuses at Bayer invented diacetyl morphine. And they tried it. They gave it to loads of their staff. They said, have, have some of this. What do you make of this? And they 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 said it was um they said no law it wasn't laudanum. The opium was used in laudanum. Laudanum is tincture of opium mixed up in a bit of alcohol. It was very popular as well among working classes of England for sure. But morphine was the problem. And I'm not talking about laudanum when I talk about morphine, not at all. The reason they made diacetyl morphine was because opium uh, morphine was uh, too addictive. And they and the German staff at Bayer Pharmaceuticals reported their feeling heroic. They said they felt heroic. So they called it hero, hero, heroin, heroin. And it turned out to be a little bit more addictive than morphine. Good one, lads. But my point is, they give they give opiates as a remedy. It's a painkiller, but it's also a poison. 
it kills people. So heroin is at once a remedy and a poison. Alcohol is at once a remedy and a poison. Alcohol is used to, an, 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 any, um, to, to clean wounds. If you have an injection at hospital, the first thing they're going to do is rub alcohol on the site. It's considered a remedy. And it's also considered a poison. And then the, the scapegoat gets involved here because check this one out. How many times, how many times have you drunk, consumed, imbibed said remedy stroke poison? How many times have you imbibed said remedy stroke poison, we call alcohol, caused an absolute mess of life and in the morning blamed the alcohol? You scapegoated it. You blamed the booze. And interestingly, interestingly, a lot of alcoholics and a lot of drug addicts, after they've had an absolute nightmare out on the piss or out on the crack or out on the coke or out on the smack, whatever, there's that ritual, isn't there? Pouring it down the sink. I'll never do it again. Look, I'll never do it again. Or even the smack. Look, ingrained Gilles Zamo. He, he, he poured it down the sink. Oh, Zamo, bless him. I'll never do it again. We've all thrown our drugs away. We've all, we've all made a ritual of showing someone how much we care about them by dumping our drugs. And that's the scapegoat. That's, that's, that's the sacrifice. And the sins, the sins of the user being sent off into the bewilderness. The Pharmacon makes so much sense. It is, it's such an interesting triple meaning. And you can, wherever you spot it, you can start asking questions. Because wherever you spot it, you're going to get problems. The reason... The reason European metaphysics consider Descartes, I think, therefore, I am, right? Descartes' writing is, a list of, is, is basically meditations on why God exists, why God is so great, why God is perfect, why God is omniscient and omnipresent. Western metaphysics largely defends the existence of God. And in doing so privileges human speech over the technology of writing. Because it, it, it much like Socrates, who saw writing as a, a dangerous supplement, much like, much like the, uh, the Egyptian god, who when given the gift of the pharmacon, the, the, t the technology of writing, said, no, that's not a solution, that's a problem. Much like all of them, European metaphysics saw writing as, a, as a, a, th a threat to speech because speech says we're here. Speech is human presence, whereas writing is human absence. You're not there. If, if someone leaves you a note, yeah, if someone leaves you a note, you're not there. You're gone. Hello, mate. Sorry I weren't here when you woke up. I've decided to go to Mugate for the day. Yours, Chris. And when your mate wakes up, he reads that, but you're not there. Your human presence isn't there. It's that it actually marks your absence. The note marks your absence. However, it gets a bit complicated when a lover writes you a letter and it makes you cry. Because how can a letter, how can you not be in there? How can, you're not there. This is just marks on a page. How can it affect you emotionally? Would it appear there is some trace of your presence in those marks? Was, was Socrates right after all to consider writing a dangerous supplement because it actually did threaten what we call presence? Because it actually does threaten the idea of the human soul. Because if a letter can make you cry, letters, people have killed themselves after reading letters. 
it would appear writing isn't such a bunch of random marks after all. It would appear there is an element of presence left in those words. On the same page, I'm not an alcoholic, I'm a binge drinker. But I'm barred from drinking from an area about the size of a quarter of Europe. Is that bad, lol? I, 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 don't, I don't think um, an act to be an alcoholic, you have to drink all the time. I think it's a question of manageability and control. So I think that's a question you need to ask yourself. Is, is your drinking working out for you and those around you? I don't give a shit. I mean, crack on if that's what you want to do. <laughs> I think it. I, it's usually when people say things like they're banned from area a quarter the size of Europe, I'm guessing that you've had a few bad times. And that's all right if it was just you because, you know, I think we, you're allowed to make choices for yourself even if they're bad. We talked about it the other day. If you're anything in life, you're allowed to do anything in life if you're willing to deal with the consequences, whether positive or negative. But if you're banned from a, a, a significant area, I'd suggest that you've damaged some other people's lives, and that's when you have to question your uh, your your drug your drug or alcohol use. Nice one for the fiver. I'm nearly at minimum wage for this quality philosophical content. It would appear that Henrik hasn't sent me an email yet. I wonder if I'll get a proton mail one from him in a minute. Just absolutely, um, what do you call it? Uh, just knocked up now. <laughs> Henrik at proton mail. So listen, the reason I mention all of this, and look at that, Moslab has nailed it again. What is going on? What is going on here? Because this was my next point. Look at the technology of the phone. The mobile phone, a.k.a. cell phone, as they're known in America. It's all about communication. It's all about being connected. It gives us social media. Social, right? Remember that word. This communication advice gave us social media. We're all connected. We, we can all see right into the hearts of each other's lives. We know what everyone's doing. We're seeing them here. We did a ba 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 ba. So that's the uh, that's uh, the the remedy it, it gave us. It remedied us being apart. You're all around the world. My loved one's gone away, but I can video chat with her. You know, there's a there's a sense of a solution there. You never need to be away from the office. You've got your phone. You don't need to be away from your families. You don't need to be away from your friends. You can connect with them. Connection, communication, social media. And yet, the damage, the poison that that self-same object has done to communication, to connection, to social to society is vast. It has it has it has brought us together without a doubt. And you know what at what cost? Atomizing us. Because it's 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 a it's a, it's a simulate it's a simulated connection. It's a simulated communication. Google is already now giving you email replies someone writes you an email it's 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 ai machine learning language reads the email for you and suggests a fucking sentence i nearly used one the other day because it was what i was about to write and i was like uh, yeah so the logical conclusion of that and we've been here before on this channel that software will will read that email from your mate john it will then read the previous hundred emails that you and John have had between you. And it will write the fucking email for you. It will write the email for you. Now, not only in response to something John writes to you, you'll be, ab you'll be able to set limits. You'll be able to set, like, parameters. So you'll get this new plug-in, 
and it will say, how often do you want to talk to John? And you'll go, eh, John, he's not, he's hardly in a circle, mates. Four times a month, once a week, and now John once a week. And you'll, you'll section off loads of different friend groups. Them lot get one once a week. These ones, birthdays, uh, Christmas and New Year. Work buddies, when, when we do something good at work. And the computer will know because it follows your calendar, it follows your social media, follows your emails, follows your YouTube channels, knows everything you do and can report all that to John. And then John's got similar software on his computer. So his computer checks out everything that's going on in his life and replies to you. You're no longer needed in that exchange. <laughs> You're not needed in that exchange. So we get so the phone as a as a technology, social media as a technology has that sense of the pharmacon because it's at once a, a remedy and a poison. It's uh, it's it, it's definitely something that hasn't been considered. We don't think about these things. We, they, I have never seen, I've never heard any of these technology companies doing the necessary research in advance to find out what these things will do. It's just assumptions. Well, it's got to be a good thing, and it's got to be a good thing. I mean, look at social media. Social media, Facebook, Twitter, Parler, all that lot. I don't think I've ever seen our people less social since the arrival of that sort of software. Remember the classic example I gave you of the Thai massage shops? When I first started going there, you'd walk in and there'd be 15 girls and they'd all be sitting around, some of them cleaning, some of them doing their nails, doing each other's hair. And if you sat down for a massage, you could talk to them all, all of them. Everyone would be having a conversation. Same going into a bar. If you went into a bar in Thailand, like I'm talking 15 years ago now, everyone would be talking because that's what you did in bars. It was social. You could sit at the bar and you could ask someone if they wanted to play pool. And then you'll talk to different people. And if there were some other foreigners, like English people in there, you could talk to them. Going to a Thai massage shop now, they're all, they're all on their phones. Thai girls have got two or three phones. I think, they, I, think they're, I think Thai people have got more phones per person than any other nation. And you get to talk to the girl who's massaging you now and no one else. So that's, that's social media has done that because they're all on it. They're all on social media. And it's, it's removed them from their society. Same in the bar. I mean, you lot must all know this. When I go out for dinner with my missus, she will not get her phone out. I, will, I go fucking spare. After dinner, five or ten minutes just relaxing. And don't get me wrong, if it's just like a little afternoon snack at a cafe because we're busy... She's free to do what she wants. But if we're going out for dinner in the evening, that's that's time for me and her. And I will I have sat at restaurants, and I'm talking about expensive restaurants in London, which are a night out where people have worked hard to get that money together to have a uh, to treat themselves to somewhere nice out in Mayfair or something, like Scots or something. And there's couples and they're both on their phones. It's heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. They've managed to find some time where they can spend it with each other and no one else, and they're both sitting there. And you know what they're doing on their phones? Socialising. <laughs> Fucking socialising. And you know what I was saying about the, the email service where it slowly removes the human element from, from humanity? I mean, just think of that. Removing the human element from humanity, right? Now let's look into advertising. Advertising has invaded almost totally public space. 
We've all seen these uh, images of Tokyo, which is just an advertising landscape. In London, in London's Piccadilly, the centre of the capital, people go there to look at the adverts, the big adverts. And now on these social media sites we spend so much time on, advertising is everywhere. It's all over them. Yeah, it's everywhere. You, you don't even know when you're being advertised. Some of these adverts are so cunning. Little Bullet, thank you, mate. We are now on. We're now above minimum wage. My phone is mostly for ordering repeat prescriptions and Chinese takeaway. I got a mixed up once and asked the health centre if I could order a meal for delivery. <laughs> Cracked her up. Problem is, if you'd have rung up the Chinese takeaway and asked them for a couple of packs of codeine, they'd have probably delivered it. <laughs> nice one, Mr. Bullet. Appreciated. Now, let's think about the advertising all over social media. Because what social media advertising does is it reads all your messages. Sometimes it reads where your cursor's going. Because usually where our cursor goes, where our eyes are going. What's that over there? What's this here? It looks at what you've shared with friends. It looks at what you've liked. It looks at what you've commented on. And it takes all that information from, let's say, one month. This person has liked this, 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 this. They've uh, commented on this, 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 this. They've commented positively on this, 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 this. They've commented negatively on this, 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 this. They've had most conversations with this person, and this person likes this, 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 this. And they build up this image. And then they match that image with someone else who's got that image. And they look at what that other person has spent their money on recently. And they're the adverts you're going to get. Your behavior on social media determines your experience of social media. The adverts you get are based on your behavior. Now, the problem with that is uh, there's many, obviously, but there's a really, there's a darker problem there because we're now all living in different worlds on social media. On social media, we're living in different worlds because we're all having different experiences of it. And as advertising gets more cunning, as advertising uh, is less and less, um, what's the word, is less and less self-identical in as much as we don't know what is advertising and what isn't now. We click on something because it's, it's a funny video. But we've actually just been advertised to. We've actually just um, been marketed to. It, it might not mean anything to you then, but because you like it and leave a comment, three days' time, you're going to get the second part of that campaign somewhere else on a different bit of uh, social media that Google has sold to the other site based on what you've done on that site. And then if you visit a few websites, just for a bit of browsing, and then it will look at them and look at them, it will make these connections, bosh, bosh, bosh. And your future is different to mine. My experience of the internet is different to yours. I'm seeing different things. And as this develops, it will become more and more specific. And we end up being having completely different experiences of the world based on our behavior. And that is what social media is doing to us, separating us even more, taking us down and down and down until we're that last indivisible unit that can just consume and produce the individual, which is the weakest, most lonely, most prone to addiction, self-harm, suicide, and all the rest out of all the potential settings. Family doesn't take that into account. Community, not interested. Nation, old school. Individual. Fraser McBurney, thank you, mate. On the bus the other day, I saw two young ladies on their phones texting each other while they sat across from each other. The world has gone mad. 
Uh, thank you for the donation. I don't think we even know the half of it. At least they're still communicating to an extent. We know, we know why European people are struggling. We know why the people who are replacing us are so strong. Because they've got things like religion. They've got things like family. They've got things like community. And yet, we continue to take on these technologies that continually divide us. You know, we've been made weak by the loss of our communities. We've been made weak by the loss of our extended families. And we take on these, these technologies that have come all the way from writing, that have come all the way from a painting of a buffalo on a cave wall in France to where we are today. Now, I'm not saying for a minute I'm not saying at all that that evil is inherent to that technology. I'm not at all. I do believe that writing threatens the existence of God. I do believe writing threatens self-presence because I don't believe that exists. I think it actually questions it in a successful way. But I don't think these technologies are inherently evil. They're just, they're just being exploited again. Again, you'll see where this goes. They're being exploited because they're not being sold. They're not being used for good. No one's thinking, let's, let, let's sell this product and, and bring our communities together. Let's, let's sell this product that might bring families together. What we come back to again is power. Power. And once you've got power imbalances, all technologies can be used to exploit and to divide and then conquer. Ragnar says, after this stream, I'll get Jordan Peterson, Peterson recommended. Uh, everyone will. Everyone gets sent Jordan Peterson these days. It's incredible how YouTube went from hating him to everyone who's not centrist or centre-left gets sent Jordan Peterson. And the mad thing is about JP, I mean, I quite like him, most of it, but he said some shocking things. But the mad thing about Jordan Peterson is he spent five years being accused of a gateway to the alt-right. And now... He's used by the powers that be because he's a gateway to the left. <laughs> Jordan Peterson is a pharmacon. <laughs> he's both the solution and the poison. <laughs> Incredible. What a turnout. <laughs> well, I thought I had a little video for you, but it would appear I have messed up here. Right, listen, I've been rambling for 45 minutes, but I want you to do something. Oh, that's it. It was a bit of a it was a bit of um boxing, but we won't watch it. It's a bit inappropriate. Right, listen, scrubs. For tomorrow afternoon show, for the Sunday afternoon show. If you, if you listen to nothing else, I know I've been rambling about things no one cares about, but if you listen to anything, listen to this, because this is how you can get involved tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to play a game, all right? We're going to play a game tomorrow. Let me just thank that. Why hasn't that come through? Oh, don't tell me. Can you believe what's happened? Messages ain't coming through. Last one I got is Ragnar. I can see that, Stephen. Stephen said, I just wanted to say that you are at your best when you synthesize your knowledge of postmodernism and marketing 
to diagnose Western pathology. Good work. Nice one, Stephen. That's very kind of you. Oh, the messages have all just come through. There you go. You know what, Stephen? I'll tell you why that's especially nice, because I was just sitting there thinking that I've had two donations. People vote with their money on this stream, and I've just thought no one give a shit about that 45-minute rant. I just went on. <laughs> and then you said that. Lovely. The messages just came through as well. Now, I'm not saying it was because of Stephen's donation. <laughs> Thank you, mate. That's very kind. I like that. I feel confident and excited talking about that stuff. But I do feel that people uh, uh, get a bit pissed with some of it. Yeah, good one, Moslab. Very good. Very good. You're, you said you'll do it. It blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. Right. This is what we I want. I want to do this for tomorrow night. Tomorrow afternoon stream, okay? Okay. You're gonna to have to come on the the this. You have to come on here. You know you'll be there. What? Hello. You'll be there. So you have to be able to get on. But audio only. You don't have to come on video. Audio only is enough, right? And then you've got to tell me three things. So it could be, for instance, I once got off with Paul Daniel's wife, Debbie McGee. Number two, I once had surgery on my balls to make them smaller. And number one, I once jumped off the Eiffel Tower with a parachute. All right? So you give three things. One of them is true. And then we put it to the glorious house of scrubs to vote. And then, of course, then you leave the screen while we go through it. And then you tell us in the chat. So if you want to take part, you've got to come up with three things. One of them real and two of them false. All right? It will be a laugh. Now, look, don't make the same mistakes we have done with the drawings and the photos where people don't bother and then when it happens, we're all having an absolute laugh and people feel like they're missing out. Give it a go. You've only got to come on with audio. You haven't got to show your boat race. So three things. One of them has to be true and you've got to come up with the, the two lies as well. And it'll be a bit of fun because we'll get to know you a bit more as well. I reckon in an hour's show, we could probably do about... 10 of them so um good luck make some effort please scrubs and i am not oblivious to the flutter of super chats that have come through um that's very kind of you victimized said one of the best videos i've seen in a while good lord i hope you're talking about this one what an incredible thing to say look he can't you're a new man you are are you really going to do it? Be honest with me, Moslab. Are you going to sit there in your pants? <laughs> Get the old American with that one. Are you going to wear your pants <laughs> and do it? I don't know. I think you're having me on. I can't see. If, you're, if your whole family, including your missus, are out and aren't likely to come home, I reckon there's a 50% chance you'll do it. If your missus is there, there's not a chance you're going to take your kit off and start bending i'm not a chance <laughs> i just can't see that at all right deadbeat chess me too not that kind of me too oh that's very kind i'm assuming that you're agreeing with what steven said which was that i f i agree but you can't do a lot of this stuff because people get a bit sick of it but this is what me and um semi agog will talk about and that that will be a fascinating conversation i hope because it's very interesting stuff i love it all i mean we throw this baby out with a bath water just because they happen to be french or frankfurt school or whatever madness I, I, it's just madness uh, that's lovely, Shell Bobs. It doesn't matter. Okay, that's that's cool. That actually, actually, a great point because it's just been Christmas and New Year. 
Uh, Billy, it'll be one day this week. Uh, Rusky, the, what, the, the, the question game, that'll be tomorrow, three or four o'clock. Let's say three o'clock so I can get some work done on my novel. Uh, thank you, Dead Beaches. So three o'clock tomorrow, we're going to do this game. John Palmer said, ha, 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 ha. I started doing yoga. Good Lord. <laughs> is that like a new version or is it a typo? On the Wii. Oh, my God. You started yoga it up on the Wii. White Wolf, who usually just howls, has dropped a penny short of a cockle. Nice one, White Wolf. Batch says, it's not that I get pissed with it. I just don't understand a lot of it. And that's also important, but I do try and make it clear. I don't, I try not to go all too arsy. And that's why I sort of make jokes and that, that, you know, because Socrates didn't really go down the pub with Plato. <laughs> Just lighten it up a little bit. But okay, Batch, that's also a fair point. And I'll take that into account because I think these, I think these concepts are important. I think they're relevant. And so that, I will have to make it more accessible. That's that's a fair point. Okay. Uh, Moody Edge says, Come feel the noise. <laughs> a great tune. Uh, thank you, White Wolf. Thank you, Debbie Chess. Oh, good Lord. Hang on. Oh, don't say I've missed that one. He'll be pissed. Hang on. <laughs> Little bullet. <clears throat> My friend's wife has raised two children ran the house and the farm and kept all the books for herself and her husband and she's never owned a mobile phone nice one nice i don't think everyone needs one but increasingly look i'm not i'm not saying that they're a bad thing that that was kind of the point thanks for the donation mate it's not it's like writing isn't bad but it does have an effect. Writing, the technology of writing, has had an effect on human presence. It has. You know, it, it, it has affected our understanding. That's why West European metaphysics kept it at bay for so long, because they knew it would. <laughs> and it's the same with uh, communications technology. They're not, in, they're not inherently... Um, evil or bad but we need to understand the the effects they have we need to understand what is sacrificed what is threatened <laughs> people are saying debbie mcgee out of the three of them that's that's the one i'd like to do that was the one i'd wished was true love to have scored with mcgee but you know in her prime light not now she looks like a plum in crown uh, in clown makeup thank you for your words sir i feel better already i'll take that william runner older boy billy runner nice one interesting that you mentioned that actually because there's something i want to talk about about feeling better miguel de Murillo loves monkey dust <laughs> there's nothing like joining in is there nice one miguel de Murillo. Not sure I know what monkey dust is. I know what sea monkey dust is. No, it will be. It will be the stream. The game will be the stream. We'll do that as our as our game. Look at Moslab scoring absolute massive points with the other half. He loves the sound of his wife's laugh. Best sound in the world. Wonderful. Lovely thing to say. I hope you tell her that. No, no bloody point telling us. I mean, it's nice. Broken silence. Enjoyed doing it with Debbie McGee. Not a lot, but he liked it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, people, let me get some batteries for the old ball and chain. Come feel the noise. Yes. Ah. Barton, Tartan, Tay. <laughs> That's the first ever long distance Barton, Tartan, 
and say, if you can even hear me. Well, then I got cold when I bent down for two minutes. Good Lord, I'm all on dot love. I'll have a second glass return to Dottingham, please. Put these in here, press the button, blow my face off. It's going to happen one day. You know what, people? I was talking... Uh, I think so, John. I think so. I think uh, a bit of splink and a bit of monkey dust. And, you know, Bob's your uncle. Um, now, have the comments stopped loading again? Uh, but they come back last time, so I think there's a way around it. There you go. They've started again. Oh, no. They're only, uh, they're only Twitter ones. Why does this keep happening? I mean, if this happens tomorrow, we're absolutely screwed. I had something else to tell you as well. I might still go there. They all just suddenly came back a minute ago. Without sounding like an arsehole, can someone give like a, a two quid super chat? I'll, I'll pay it back. Because I just want to, when Stephen Campbell done it last time, it, it kicked it in the nuts. Yeah, I'm guessing, but even if, no, actually, quit that. Don't do that. Because even if it is that, that's not good enough. No, I'm getting, um, I'm getting Twitch ones, but not YouTube ones. Chris Dangerfield, you've kept me sane while cleaning a teenager's bedroom. You should have bloody got the teenager to do it, cheeky little bugger. Awful, weren't they, kids? You should remind him of what happened when, you know, he, he got in. What? <laughs> no, but don't have that conversation with him, actually. Don't remind him about that. <laughs> right, well, I'm no longer seeing your comments. I'm going to hope and pray that they might come back. But listen, there is something I want to end on anyway. Um, I'm talking to a couple of people today who've been really quite depressed. And... Uh, the pair of them watch so much nationalist content, it's unbelievable. One of them, not so much. But I beg you, like, listen, someone sent me a video of the uh, Africans rioting in Dublin. And he's not one of the two people, by the way, but he is also pretty miserable at the moment. And I said to him, I said, mate, I, I ain't going to watch that. And I don't watch those things. I know what's going on. And I just can't keep exposing myself to so much misery. I know what's happening. It's not going to affect my ability to change it by watching it and getting really upset, really miserable. It's just not, it's just, I don't think it's good for you to consume too much of that really unpleasant material. You know, if, if anyone in this chat really doesn't know what's going on, really doesn't know what the solutions are, then I'd be surprised. But don't feel obliged. Don't think you have to watch all that really heartbreaking. And it's heartbreaking. These are our nations. These are where we grew up. This is what our ancestors built for us. And to watch all that nice one, Batch, I can see it on Entropy, but it hasn't um, kicked... Uh, it hasn't kicked it into, into action. Thanks for the fire, mate. But I'm gonna I'm gonna just refresh the stream once. Don't worry, people. I'm not gonna be effing around with all this again tonight because we've reached the hour anyway. But let me I'm gonna disappear for a couple of seconds because it'll be nice to see see the chat before I go. See you in a couple of seconds. Well, miraculously, that has worked. Uh, nice one, Batch. I mean, I not, don't know if it was that, but thank you very much. But this is starting to really piss me off. Now, luckily, I am... A, no, I, it came through, Batch. I just put it on the screen, mate. Appreciate it. Um, I, um, I am still a YouTube partner, so I might talk to them about this because Entropy keeps saying it's not them. 
And if I can still see the Twitch streams, I'm guessing this is a YouTube problem. But look, the last thing I can see is what Batch said, and I guarantee there's a load more. And the that's the last comment I can see. Shocking. Thank you, little bullet. Cleaner vacuum cleaner, you become a vacuum cleaner. But can you see my point? I've really... Uh, thank you, little bullet, for that donation. I'm seeing people getting quite depressed from this stuff, and... Just you know, I've got I've got a few uh, I've got a few more comments just come through, but you know, there's channels like this is why we fight, which is really positive, and and you know, and there's channels like Chris's Patriotic Talk where they have a bit of a laugh, and we can we can hang around in a group where we're doing fun things, and you know, just hello Chew, hello Chew. So just be aware, you know, sometimes I've talked to people and they're doing five or six hours of nationalist content a day and that that can do you in. And it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make you not committed if you're not watching that material all the time. It doesn't make you less of a, a nationalist if you're not necessarily watching that stuff. And you're banned. Thanks for your ridiculous comments. Um, you know, so think about that. If you think about how you, how this stuff makes you feel, and look, I'm not saying avoid stuff that's a bit heavy. You know, there, there's stuff sometimes you need to see it because they offer solutions and there's a reason for it. But some of this thing, some of these things, I think, are just really, really, really depressing. And I think we should look a lot nearer. I mean, Woes has been talking about this stuff. You know, Woes in one of his streams said that he's he's bored with talking about a, a certain kind of nationalism, and and me and him talked about it. And you have you have to be careful. You just look after yourselves. Look after your 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 spiritual side, basically. And you don't have to believe in God. You don't have to have a deity, but you have got a spiritual side, which is. You know, you can see it something as simple as, you know, your 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 mental health. Just see it something as simple as that. And you know, don't don't let it drag you down. Because if it drags you down, then you can't engage with the solutions. And the solutions is really where we need to be. Yeah, that's it, Paul. Yeah. Do plenty of other things. And on that bombshell, people, um, it's been quite an interesting stream. I'm going to go to Super Duper, get some food, and then I'm going to spend the night writing. I will see you at the crack of dawn. I'll see you tomorrow morning. It might be a little bit later. It might be 8, 8.30 because I'm going to be up all night working. Um. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I will talk to you again for the second time. <laughs> the second time. What? Joy already said this. I will see you in the morning. Take care of yourselves, people. Look after yourselves. And look after the people whom you love. Hang on. Hang on. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't click that one. Take care, people. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday afternoon and evening. And I'll see you Sunday morn. Ta-da! All the world loves a lover. All the girls in every land. And to know the joy of loving is to live in the world of man. Can't put any more comments on the stream. That that's like stopped again. Thanks. That's lovely. I can put the Twitch ones on. Music starts to play. Night will turn to day. Darkness disappears when the one you love is near. You're in man. All the world 
Thanks for trying, Martin. I got you two quid, but it hasn't worked. I appreciate it, but it hasn't worked. This is a real annoyance, isn't it? Where time is always spring, happiness is king. Dreams you dream come true when the one you love loves you. You're in love. I'm gonna have a word with YouTube immediately. I'm gonna do that right now. Um, this is it's really getting to me. This is yeah. There you go. Grrr! Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. We'll get through it. All the world loves a lover. All the girls in every land of man to know. Joy of loving is the They've real. come through. In the world of man to Well, they all came through at the end there. There you go. I think I've done most of them. <laughs> I'll talk to YouTube now. <laughs>